Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? <laughs> Are you blessed and highly favored or flavored? You should be both, right? Praise God. Great things are happening. Amen. We're dying. Amen. Hallelujah. The word says God delights in the death of his saints. Every breath you're getting closer to home, that ought to be a joyful thing. <laughs> For those that don't know Jesus, it's a fearful thing. <laughs> but if you know Jesus and you are connected to his presence... It's a joyful thing. Praise God. <laughs> oh, yes. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Glory. In verse 6. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Therefore, humble yourself. Okay, you can all go home now. <laughs> That's tonight's training. <laughs> Eat humble pie with a lot of whipped cream. Therefore, humble yourselves. You know, when you hear the word humble yourself, God is saying deny yourself. Amen. When you see humble, and don't, again, please have mercy on God. And don't come to him and tell him you're his humble servant. Puke. Hi, Lord, I'm your humble servant. Man, expect lightning, amen? <laughs> Never tell God you're his humble servant. Does everybody understand that? That is stinking religious garbage. <laughs> Hallelujah. It didn't sound humble for somebody to have to say it to their humble, right? It sounds stinking prideful. That's what it does to me. <laughs> Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. In other words, he's got something he's going to do with you. But you've got to maintain a humble spirit. Quit grumbling and complaining. Quit being anxious. You know, God places things on purpose for us Amen. to see what we're going to do. He wants to know whether you're going to alter his plan Amen. because it's not coming the way you think it should. And what he does is when he checks us, he even places things where there's certain things that are supposed to be at a certain time. And when you try to push it and rush it, God looks at you and says, you don't trust me. That's what he does. He looks at it and says, you don't trust me. Does everybody understand? Because that sure isn't humble, is it? It's prideful. He says, therefore, humble yourselves, and it's coming. That's why he says in verse 7 something very important. Cast your cares, your concerns, your plans upon me, he says. Why? Because he cares for you. Because he knows what's best for me and you than we do. Even though sometimes we think we do. Here's the kicker. Be sober. Be what? Alert. That means discernment. Let me tell you, without discernment, you and I can't make it. And that discernment can only come by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because you must be able to discern everything. The first thing that he wants you to discern is whose voice are we listening to? Be sober. Be alert. And here's the, here's the key to being sober and alert. It says be vigilant, which means consistent. God can't trust someone that isn't consistent. The first thing he checks you to see if you're consistent in prayer. Every day. The three abides. Abiding in prayer. He wants to see if your heart seeks him during worship. You're consist consistent with it. Remember songs of deliverance. Amen. He wants to know if you're going to speak every word because he knows, then you know the law of sowing and reaping. 
He always wants to make sure that we know the law of sowing and reaping. And the third thing is fellowship. He wants to make sure you're consistent in fellowship. Three areas of consistency is what gains God's trust. Amen? He's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for consistent. See, too many people are trying to get perfect on their own. And you can't. You are perfect in him, not in us. So the only way to be perfect in him is to constantly abide in him. And all the areas that it requires abiding. That's why he says, be sober. Okay, that means be alert. Man, you're sensitive. You're discerning. And it can only be done if you're consistent. Other than that, you cannot be alert. You can't discern. What does the word say? Submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Same thing. How are you going to resist the devil if you don't know he's there? Amen? All right. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a lion, roaring lion. In other words, he's got a big mouth, seeking whom he may devour. So he's going to try to say something to you. And what is he going to try to do? He's going to try to get you to agree with something. It's called false agreements. Everyone say false agreements. He's trying to get you to agree with something that's going to move you out of position or cause you to sow in the flesh. He's trying to get you to do something that will cause your connection with the Lord and lose trust. That's his job. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Again, your faith is your connection with God's presence. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you are not the only one that needs to be alert by being consistent. Amen? Is everybody okay? False agreements. Too many people fall into them. Now, we can gather together every single day, and you can still not get connected. Because people get, try to get connected by the mind. And it's spirit to spirit, because God is spirit. You know why we're worshiping? And we were just, remember we talked about penetrating the, uh, uh, the, the, well, not only that, the soul, but um, the reality realm. While we were worshiping, and we were singing that song, Spirit Come, what was he saying? Deep unto deep. As soon as I began to hear that, I began to sense spirit to spirit connecting. And next thing I saw was my spirit dancing with the Lord while I was still worshiping. And the Lord said, keep worshiping because you are fueling your connection with me. So my spirit was dancing with the Lord even though I was worshiping. Why? Because I was worshiping to fuel because only through the worship can we fuel our spirit, man. We fuel him by eating the word of God, by speaking the words. Amen? Because what you sow is what you reap. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. But I sense my spirit, man, begin to dance with the Lord. And I just saw myself, and he just kept saying, worship me. That's what's fueling us. That's what's fueling your spirit to maintain that position. Does everybody understand that? It was deep on too deep. Penetrating reality. And we did a teaching on that already. All oh, praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. False agreements. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 11. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? False agreements. There's things that happen when we agree with things that are lies. It's called a false agreement. Or things that are not what God approves of. Those are false agreements. And people have no idea because they, nothing happens right then and there. But it's waiting for you at a specific time. 
Verse 11, O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections or desires. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. <clears throat> Do not be what? Unevenly yoked. Why? Because associations bring impartations. Amen? With what? Unbelievers. Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Now, Belial was known as the prince of lying. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Belial was known as the prince of lying. He's associated with the prince of flesh. Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what a what? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Now, you've got to remember that the world associates with idols. That everything to the world is idols. For you are the temple of the living God. God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people if they do something important. Come out from among them. Quit agreeing with the things that are displeasing to God. Because you know what he calls that? Watch. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch. How do you touch? With a green. Don't touch what is unclean. Touching what is unclean is a false agreement. Anything that is displeasing to God or out of God's time is a false agreement. And then I'll be a father to you. I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's why the word says very, something very powerful. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. So if we maintain, listen, you cannot maintain being led by the Spirit of God if you're not willing to be consistent, to be alert. You must have discernment to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen? Belial, again, is a prince of lying. His deceptions are lies, aren't they? That's what he deceives on. They are distractions for you and I to agree with a lie. <laughs> it's called a false agreement. These things create false agreements, and it opens doors, and people don't realize it. In Psalm 64. Is everybody there? Psalm 64, verse 1 through 6. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. <clears throat> Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. And suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. Everyone say suddenly. 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 Man, let me tell you, the enemy comes when you least expect it. Or when you're caught up in something and very busy and distracted. That's when he likes to throw in something for you to do a false agreement. It says they encourage themselves in evil in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. Do you know that the enemy is trying to lay a snare for you every single day and every moment he can? He's trying to set up. In fact, there are demonic forces that have been assigned to you. There are demons that are assigned to you. There are strong men that are assigned to you. And their purpose is to snare you any way they can. And let me tell you, if, if they can't get you while you're awake, they'll try and get you while you sleep. So it says that they encourage themselves in an evil matter. That evil matter is to lay a snare for you secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. They have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are what? Deep. So what's he trying to get you to do? Agree with something. 
And it doesn't mean somebody's going to come up to you and try to get you to agree with. It's a demon that's going to come up to you and try and get you to agree with. Amen? It is a voice of a stranger who's going to try. It's going to be a thought. Because behind every thought is a voice. And behind every voice is a presence. The wicked plan evil schemes of deception who cause false agreements. That's why we have to battle first think, first worst thinking all the time. Amen? Come on, you know that when you get sick, first thing you didn't think you're thinking about doing is dying. You're already planning your funeral. <laughs> and you only sneezed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who do you think comes up to tell you all that? Something goes wrong the first thing. Oh, no! Oh, then you snap out of it. Whoa. Holy Ghost hips you in the back of the head, you know. Come on. Who told you that, he'll say. False agreements are keys to release demonic activity. Why? Because it's the presence of sin. The presence of sin uh, is the presence of evil, isn't it? So they're going to try to cause a false agreement with me and you, no matter what it is. They try to cause bitterness. What do you think offense is? Offense is nothing but a false agreement. Bitterness is a false agreement. In John chapter 8. Oh, glory. <clears throat> In verse 42, Jesus said to him, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the what? Devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. He is the father of lies. It is the presence of evil that is always trying to lie to me and you so that we think worse first and come into a false agreement. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin if I tell the truth? Why do you not believe me? He who is of God is supposed to hear God's words. Amen. Therefore, you do not hear because you're not of God. Again, what the expression here is not of God is not being led by the Spirit. Then he's saying, okay, you've been a believer 25 years and you're still not led by the Spirit. Why? Because you're still agreeing with false agreements. Look at the, look at the battle. Now, let me share this with you. Now, this is wild. Think about that. Look at the battle over the gifts of the Spirit. Look at the battle over the doctrine of once saved, always saved. That is a false agreement. And it is false doctrine. And look at how many people don't believe in casting out devils or praying in tongues. Oh, that was, or they got to have certain things done. Because they live by a letter, but the letter is not correctly interpreted. That's false agreement. And it causes a lot of division, doesn't it? The devil is a father of lies. False agreements are lies from the darkness. They promote strongholds in people's lives. They bring bondage and they bring back scales. That's why people who get involved in starting false agreements, whether it be bitterness or unforgiveness, they begin to drift further and further and the scale begins to build more and more. So now the enemy's got that individual putting stuff on Facebook, which they shouldn't even be speaking about. Condemning, doing this. 
And they think they're doing a righteous act, but they're really stupid. And they're stinking religious, and they've agreed with a false agreement. And they've opened themselves up, but they think that they're holier now. Because that is deception. The word says, speak of things edifying. Amen? If you're going to speak something that's, I mean, you speak the truth, expose the evil. Amen? Amen? But you don't have to expose stuff in your brother or your sister. God already knows that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Just, just dumb stuff. 1 Timothy 4. Listen, you can go to all the cemetery schools you want or seminary schools you want. But no matter what it is, you must be led by the Spirit. You can have all the knowledge, and that's all it does is puff a person up. And they can't even correctly interpret it anyways. And they're in bondage, and they walk around with scales. And they're always in a place where they're critical, they're accusers. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Because they don't even realize that that spirit is trying to protect themselves because they don't want to be exposed as religious and prideful. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it, please. I think. Did I say 1 Timothy? Yes. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly, expressly. That means he's saying, listen. Wake up. He says in the latter times. Are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the connection of God's presence. Faith. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Hello, we see that already. Does everybody understand that? Speaking lies in hypocrisy, false agreements, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and they know the truth. He's saying these people are being deceived by doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits. Doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits, they promote religion. Religion. Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, they snare mankind with false agreements, which bring, let me share with you something. When you come into a false agreement, look at, even when you come into agreement, it's called a vow. <clears throat> it's almost like a covenant. <clears throat> does everybody understand it? And what it does is, if it's a false agreement, it will also open a door to a curse and a spell. A curse and a spell. That's why some people you try to talk to, even though they're supposed to be Christians, you can't penetrate them no matter what. They're so bound by that deceptive doctrine because they're actually under a curse and under a spell. And they're critical of everyone else. But yet, they have a false humility and they're scales because they can't see through. And they cannot see through and penetrate reality. They're stuck. Is everybody all right? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Genesis 3. That's the perfect example. Talking about Adam and Eve, they were walking in reality. <laughs> and they got thrown out of it. The reality run with dad. And they got removed from it. <clears throat> Why? Because they came in agreement, didn't they? Amen? Look at, uh, I'll start at verse 1. Now the serpent was what? More, More cunning, deceiving than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not 
eat of every tree of the garden. That's one of the things that that first voice will come to you. He always brings a question to try and promote reason. If he can get you to start to reason, he can get you to compromise. The moment you start to reason, you start justifying. Once you begin to justify, you no longer recognize. The sermon just got flushed. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. So she's trying to battle with the serpent. <clears throat> um, we may eat of the, trees, uh, the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it. Why? Because if you agree with it, it's called a false agreement. Lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. In other words, he called God a liar. Amen. And for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, that was a lie. They were in God's image and likeness. They were just being trained. So when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and tree desire would make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and, and he ate, and the eyes of both of them were open, but they were actually closed. They no longer could see the serpent or see the Lord anymore. Why? Because when you come into a false agreement, you begin to lose sight. The scales come. <clears throat> oh, Hallelujah. And uh, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked because the presence of God, their glory, had lifted from them. They sowed fig leaves. In other words, self came into play. This is where self was birthed. And they sowed fig leaves and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day because they could no longer see him, so they could only hear him. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord, God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called out to Adam and said to him, where are you? You know, why did God call out to him? Because he knew. He knew that they'd been getting disconnected from him in his presence. He knew. Does everybody understand that? And he wanted to test Adam to see if he could see him. And he couldn't. Adam, where are you at? Where are you be? And Adam called out. He said, I heard your voice in the garden because I couldn't see you. And I was afraid because I was naked. In other words, he'd lost his presence to glory. Self came in effect. Fear came. And he said, I was afraid and I hid myself. And what did the Lord say? Who told you that? You were naked. What did you agree with? Did you eat of that tree? Did you partake of that? Who told you to? Didn't I tell you not to? I told you you'd die. False agreement. Amen? Cunning, deceptive, manipulative, lying. That's what the serpent is. The serpent convinced Eve to partake. Amen? Eve convinced Adam to partake. Once one fell in a false agreement, the other one did too. They lost the presence of God. They became blinded to the spiritual realm and they were captivated and taken captives to fear. Oh, hallelujah. All because they agreed with a lie. 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. Hallelujah. But even if our truth, the message, everyone say message of truth. That's the gospel. If the message of truth is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Why? Because they have fallen under a what? A false agreement. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe 
lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts, and to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Very powerful. So the enemy keeps man in captivity under false agreements. Amen? Look at the traditions of men that have been handed down. Look at the religious things that have been handed down. Keeping people in captivity. Their God became their organization. Whether it be Catholicism, Baptists, or Pentecostal. As many people, their, God, their Lord is their organization. And the enemy loves to keep people in captivity by keeping them in, in bondage by false agreements. Now, the message of the gospel is a truth agreement. <laughs> and as we begin to declare truth, we begin to, the light becomes, the, the word is a light unto our path. Amen? So as we begin to declare truth, we begin to agree with truth. That's why it's important to decree it. Breaking many of the false agreements. Oh, 1 Corinthians 1. First Corinthians one. In verse eighteen. It says for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. Perishing. Why? Because they're under a false agreement and not willing to come out of the false agreement. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believed. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Why? Because they are under a tradition or doctrine that brings false agreements. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Again, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are <laughs> coveted to false agreements. The purpose of false media, fake news, which we see on TV, is to release the power of false agreement. And captivate the minds of those that are being preached to. Remember, the enemy is always trying to, his main course is to captivate, imprison. And God is trying to release. That's why the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Lord comes to bring life and life abundantly. In James chapter 3. Think about the internet and how many things pop up to try and bring people into captivity. There's a lot of porn on the internet. Man, I'll tell you what, it just comes up from everywhere and anywhere sometimes. And, and you don't have to look for it. Things that distract a person. That's all, it needs. That's all the enemy wants to do is get a seed of a false agreement and let it fester in you. And, but if you don't get rid of it quick, it will begin to root and the next thing you know, you're bound. You begin to search it through then. You begin to search things out. James chapter 3 and verse 13. 
who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast or lie against the truth. Why? Because they've been taken under a false agreement. What does he say? Bitterness, envy, and self-seeking. That's false agreements. And he says, don't lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? It's demonic. The world seeks wisdom. And much of this wisdom that is brought to them brings them in false agreements and captivity. And they think they're so smart. My phone thinks it's so smart, but it's the stupidest thing I carry around. Verse 16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. Okay, now look it. Here's more false agreements. If there's envy, it's a false agreement. Self-seeking, it's a false agreement. There's going to be confusion. Amen? Amen? And every evil thing are there. In other words, there's access. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure pure, then peaceable, then gentle, willing to yield and submit, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, wisdom that is earthly, essential, and demonic, it brings a false agreement. It's backed by a lie. Amen. And what else does it bring? It brings blindness, confusion, bondage. It opens doors to other evil influence. All by a false agreement. Look at the world now. Education, college. Look at what's going on in the colleges. Books, movies that promote lies, create false agreements, and bring covenants and vows. All to the demonic realm in darkness. In Genesis chapter 4, let's go there for a second. In verse 6 and 7. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your continence fallen? Why are you oppressed? <laughs> If you do well, will you not be accepted? You know why he was angry? Because he got corrected. God gave him instruction. But God calls people that refuse godly instruction stupid. So he should have said, hey, stupid. But anyways, he was a, God is gentle. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes he's not. <laughs> He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, the presence of evil lies at the door. And what else? Ooh. And its desire is for you. It's trying to bring a false agreement. Hmm. But you should rule over it. You should have dominion over it. Amen? He even told that to Cain, who was the offspring of the serpent. Oh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> that was, sin lies at the door all the time. Knock, knock. Who's there? So many people answered the door. Why don't you just say nobody's home? Go away. Get behind me. Put a sign on the door. Do not disturb. Amen? He's got. In Amos, you don't have to go there. The word says, it's Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together unless they agree? So I want you to understand something. When you and I make a false agreement with the enemy, you know what happens? He begins to walk with you. Mm. Romans 1. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sin. 
sin who? Sinful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 1, 28. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge or their thoughts, God gave them over to the base mind to do the things which were not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So I want you to understand, a false agreement is approving those who practice wickedness. Why? Because they'll be judged the same way. They think, well, I don't do it. That's like a drug dealer doesn't use dope. He doesn't use it. But he, he sells it to make money. Amen? There's no difference. They're both going to hell unless they turn from it. Oh, yes. So uh, to approve means to agree, doesn't it? So you and I don't want to have a false agreement of, and we don't want to agree with anything that God disagrees with. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Woohoo! False agreements. They could be very deadly. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the physical realm, we don't war according to the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which is a what? Memory lie. That's a false agreement. Does everybody get it? Casting down arguments and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's going to mean that you're going to have to be alert. But you can't be alert without being consistent. So you're just going to let these thoughts just take hold of you and just allow them to agree with you. And, and then what will happen, you're, you're going to reason it. Amen. Then you'll justify it. And it begins to get deeper and deeper and start rooting. And the next thing you know, you're doing it. You go, oh man, how did I get there? How can I even gotten agree? How could I have agreed with that? And he, listen, that's why he's called cunning. He comes when you least expect it. He knows how to get through the back door if you let him. That's why we must be consistent to stay alert. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Casting, in verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought to captivity, to the obedience of Christ. So you're going to bring them forward. You're going to examine every thought. How do you examine every thought? You don't do anything until you examine it. I mean, you're going to have all kinds of, now look at, uh, let's see, what pencil should I use? Uh, you, you don't, you know, use the right one. The one that works, how about that one? There are things, but there are things that you must examine. There are things that you know automatically. But then there's things that we must examine. Like what you're watching, what you're reading. There's this music. You're in a place. Especially, man, you can go anywhere and you hear secular music. Amen? Don't let it absorb and make, get rude in you. Many times you can go in there and the next thing you know, it brings you right to your past. Next thing you know, you're singing and and you're agreeing with it, and then you're having bad dreams. Amen? Amen? And the enemy knows. And what he does, he gets the person that you were associated with that music from your past to call you. Amen. He's trying to make all the connections as he can. 
It says, being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. So we got to do that. Stronghold is a false agreement. It's a memory lie. First Chronicles 21. Look at how many people lost their positions, lost their trust. Saul, King Saul. Remember the Lord telling him to go out and kill them all? What did he do? He brought back the king and all this cattle and whatever. And he justified and reasoned. He said, well, I brought back the king, but he was supposed to kill the king and the cattle and everything else. And they said, well, we brought back all this a sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord said, you're out of here. False agreement. Amen. Lost his position as a king. And then what happened after that? It opened the door to what? A distressing spirit tormented him constantly because he lost the protection of the presence of God. First Chronicles 20, 21 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Now Satan stood up against Israel. Listen. When he's meaning standing up against a nation, that means he's standing against the ruler, the one in authority. That's why this country has been a mess for the last, before Trump got in office, for eight years. It's been a mess. Open doors of demonic activity, approval of same-sex marriage, promotion of abortion and murder of children. All kinds of things. People don't even know what went on in that administration. It was pure evil. Pure evil. I mean, you heard preaching of doom and gloom because during that period of time, doom and gloom was about to happen. Unless something turned around, God was going to judge this country. In fact, there were some judgments in certain areas. But now that God put in his servant and turning things around, now they're going to start to get exposed. <clears throat> Satan stood up against Israel. In other words, he moved David to number Israel, which was a no-no. God already told him, don't number him. He will come to try and bring a false agreement. So David said to Joab and the leaders of the people, go number Israel from Bathsheba to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered and said, May the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. But my Lord the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? Even his servant knew it was wrong. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And let me tell you, Jerusalem got bombarded. The Lord gave David three choices. And he, every choice was going to bring death to Israel. And many people died of plagues. So, all because of one false agreement. Your one false agreement can affect other people around you. Amen? Amen? Oh. Exodus 23. Exodus 23 and verses 6 through 8. Exodus 23, verse 6, says, You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in his dispute. Keep yourself far from a false matter. Do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. And you shall not take no bribe. Bribe is a false agreement. For a bribe blinds the what? Discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. A bribe. Let me tell you, the enemy's always trying to bribe you. And he always tries to make it look greener on the other side. But it's actually much hotter. Keep far from false matters. Why? Because they promote false agreements. Take no bribe. Why? Because it blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. They twist things. 
No bribes. Psalm 15. <clears throat> One of the things that happens also is when we begin to fall into false agreements, again, you never know when the response is going to come from that because the enemy will come. It opens an area of what we call sudden attacks. You just don't know when it's going to happen. Psalm 15. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his heart, who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Why? Because he doesn't fall into false agreements. Amen? Oh, I'm going to close it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. False agreements. Be careful. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 5. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 5. Do you not remember that I was still with you? I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Okay, so lawlessness is one that, it's, how does it start? It's going to promote a false agreement. Amen? Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Well, the lawless one is a promoter of lies, isn't he? Amen. Whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all what? unrighteous deception among those who perish because they're going to fall into false agreements because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Wow. So God is going to allow them, that he's going to send delusion to them that they're going to come into a false agreement all the way to the end that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification. I'm going to say through sanctification. That means separated unto him, connected to his presence and aligned with his word. Yep. By the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel, the message of truth, for the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught. Those are true agreements. Amen. Whether by word or by our epistle. Does everybody get it? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace and repent for all false agreements, commanding all corruptible seeds of wither and die in us, breaking us loose from all of these agreements, Lord, in any way, putting it under the blood. And Lord, we just ask that you'll continue to give us discernment, 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 that we may be signs and wonders and true witnesses of your power, of your truth, of your love, and of your presence. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.